Hello Revolution students and welcome back to another video on the Russian Revolution area of study one. In this video I'm going to look at Tsar Nicholas II and his contribution to the 1905 revolution in Russia. So let's get into it. Perhaps his most significant contribution was just his uh, attitude towards what sort of political system uh, Russian society should have. So he was an autocrat. He believed in autocracy and he was very, very critical of democracy. There's a big point there. You can see he refused to allow the establishment of a legislative parliament. He had inherited this attitude from his father, Tsar Alexander III, who had instituted a number of repressive policies which we're going to look at uh, in a sec. This demand for a legislative parliament, it was a common one amongst the uh, revolutionary groups in the 1905 revolution. Father Gapon, for example, referred to it in his petition uh, where he wrote, elections to the constituent assembly be conducted under universal secret and equal suffrage. So he demanded the creation of a constituent assembly in his petition. The constituent assembly was uh, a legislative assembly um, a legislative parliament. Uh, the Duma, which was eventually created, is just another, the Russian word for parliament as well. Okay. So these repressive policies that Nicholas II continued, which his father, Alexander III, had uh, implemented, they uh, were referred to as the reaction. And they were a reaction to the assassination of the previous Tsar, Alexander II. The previous uh, Alexander II was quite liberal um, and he did institute a number of democratic reforms in Russian society. He was the one who freed the serfs or freed them um, from their serfdom and then implemented those uh, mortgages which the serfs eventually <laughs> found very difficult to pay. But he did free the serfs, um, Alexander II. He also um, instituted some forms of democracy. He created the Zemstvos and so forth, which we'll study later on in the course. Uh, however, he was assassinated, and in reaction to that, Tsar Nicholas, uh, sorry, Tsar Alexander III, he instituted these various repressive policies called the Reaction. Um, the most significant of these, you can see, there is the Statute of State Security, uh, which was passed in 18. 81, and it established special government-controlled courts outside the existing legal system. It removed judges with liberal views or sympathies. And it also increased the powers of the Okhrana and tightened press censorship. So the Okhrana was the Russian secret police. Another um, repressive policy of Tsar Nicholas II was Russification. And Russification was the policy of making everybody in Russia speak Russian, follow the Orthodox religion, etc. And it repressed all non-Russian um, languages, minorities and uh, religions such as Islam, uh, Judaism, Catholicism. The Russians themselves only made up about 55% of the population, total population of Russia. The other 45% were made up of these ethnic minorities, which included Poles and Jews and Ukrainians, um, Central Asiatic uh, Muslim uh, ethnic groups, such as the Kazakhs and so forth. So, um, and all of these people have, many of them have their own religions, their own language and etc. Okay, Russification tried to uh, make these people totally Russian. Okay, so these policies of uh, the reaction, the policies associated with the reaction, as well as the policies associated with Russification, they um, increase social tension by making the intelligentsia and ethnic minorities more critical of the Tsar, less supportive of him and his regime, and they also contributed to an increase in support for liberal and revolutionary groups. So a number of the Bolshevik leaders, uh, for example, were from a... a, a an ethnic minority. So Trotsky eventually, who eventually joins the Bolsheviks in July uh, 1917, he was from a Jewish background. Stalin, he was Georgian, okay, and he joined the Bolsheviks because of the way the Georgians had been treated by 
the Russians. So it had a huge impact upon the 1905 revolution and just later uh, revolutions as well. Another thing the Tsar failed to do was to um, implement any reforms to improve the working conditions for workers. For example, to introduce an eight hour working day or insurance policies for workers who got injured at work, maimed and so forth. Um, uh, uh, social security payments, so if workers were, um, did lose their jobs, if they had at least some uh, money to buy food and shelter. This refusal to implement uh, reforms to working conditions was just exacerbated by the recession which hit in the late 1890s and went right through to 1907, which led to mass unemployment uh, and poverty amongst the working class within the cities. There were huge numbers of uh, just unemployed workers on the streets of St. Petersburg and Moscow who became disgruntled um, and who contributed to workers' strikes and uh, various protests against uh, the Tsarist regime and this uh, just increased social tension even further. For example, in 1905 there were uh, 13,995 uh, strikes. And finally, another significant contributing factor to the 1905 revolution was the Tsar's decision to uh, drag Russia into the Russo-Japanese War, which started in 1904, January 1904, and went right through to August 1905. The Russians were defeated by the Japanese. This was um, a huge blow to Russia's uh, international reputation as a military power. And uh, it was also a huge blow to the Tsar's credibility um, within Russia as a leader. Uh, the vast majority of the people in Russia did not want to be involved in this war. Once it got through to about June 1905, there are a number of mutinies that occurred, the most famous being the Potemkin Mutiny, when the battleship, the Prince Potemkin in the Black Sea, the crew on that battleship, they mutinied. Um, as a consequence of these mutinies, the Tsar lost full control of the military, he pretty much didn't trust the military, and as a consequence he was unable to actually put down the revolution um, as quickly as he could because he feared that if he sent the military in to suppress the protests, for example, that were happening in St. Petersburg and, and Moscow, that the soldiers would join, uh, would join the revolutionaries. He eventually did, however, um, he did make uh, compromises with the revolutionaries and he did manage to stop the revolution. And he did this in a number of ways. So, although he was shaken, uh, he actually maintained his authority and even strengthened it by doing uh, a couple of things. He appeased the various groups and then he crushed another one. So the first uh, group that he appeased was the Liberals. So in October 1905, he released the October Manifesto. It was written by Sergei Wheat and its biggest promise was the creation of a legislative Duma. This dream which the intelligentsia and Liberals had had for Russia for decades. The other uh, big promise within the October Manifesto was the introduction of various political and civil rights such as freedom of speech, freedom of association. So with the October Manifesto, he managed to appease the demands of the intelligentsia and the liberals within um, the revolutionaries. Next, after these, uh, these groups were appeased, he then went on to um, try to appease the peasants' demands. So in November 1905, he agreed to pr progressively reduce the mortgage repayments uh, which the peasants were paying on their land and eventually uh, get rid of those mortgage repayments altogether. This put an end to uh, the revolution in the countryside, uh, put an end to the land seizures that were occurring at the time throughout Russia. Once he had the uh, intelligentsia, the liberals and the peasants on side, then he decided to crush the workers. So. In December 1905, he decided to, uh, he felt powerful enough to crush the St. Petersburg and Moscow Soviets. These two, these, these groups which were, I suppose, um, the true manifestation of democracy within Russia. 
the leader of the St. Petersburg Soviet was Trotsky himself. And this is where he, um, he came to fame. So that is my overview of how Tsar Nicholas II contributed to the 1905 revolution. I hope you have found it useful for your study of the Russian Revolution area of study one. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.